Hi, good evening, TNCC. I really hope that you have gone through the introduction to the seven signs and miracles of Jesus, understanding the context in which we're learning about this and why it points to Jesus as being God. Now we move on to the first miracle, the wedding at Cana. So if you will turn your Bibles to John chapter 2 and we'll begin with verse 1. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And in verse 2, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. Now you gotta understand that from a social perspective, Jesus and his disciples were sociable. Yeah, they were invited to a wedding. You know, I'm not the kind of person that enjoys being, being at a wedding, but it goes to show that people like my presence. That's why they invited me to go there. So in the social context, it's amazing showing God's nature that he focuses on relationship. We are meant to be influencers of the world with the love of Jesus. We continue on with verse 3. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. And if you understand this, this, this situation, in the Jewish culture, wine represents life's pleasures. In place, its place in a Jewish wedding is to usher a lifelong love for the two separate individuals coming together in joy and celebration. Imagine if it runs out, it's a complete humiliation. It's like love running out in a marriage. Verse 4, this is what Jesus said, Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. Hmm, if you think about it, why did Jesus say this? Did he just call his own mother woman? This kind of sound a bit disrespectful, right? But there is a difference in flesh versus spiritual familiarity. Now what Jesus was trying to present that he said this because he was focused on his mission, the spiritual, not just the, 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 the fleshly mission, but the spiritual mission of salvation, to save us for eternity, our spirits. The hour was when it was time for him to focus on his ultimate destiny, which is that miracle of salvation. Verse 5, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, it's interesting that Mary does not continue the discussion on with Jesus. Her actions are as if to prepare everyone else in expectation of a miracle. It's kind of like a peek into the relationship so close to God. We know His nature so well that we have such a positive expectation of good from God. Minus of all the dis discussion. Verse 6. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Now, let me ask you, could there be any insights that Jesus was presenting in the stone jars, water, or ceremonial washing? Think about it. In verse 7, Jesus continued and said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Verse 8, he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet they did so. Remember, do whatever he tells you? If you knew God is guiding you, how would you respond? You know we grow from faith to faith to see greater things God is working through us each time we follow his leading, even if it doesn't, it seemingly goes against our better nature. Verse 9, And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called to the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings up the choice wine first, then the cheaper wine after the guests have too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. We always say in TNCC, right? We saved the best till now. What can be learned from this statement, save the best till now? Verse 11, What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believe in him. That's the end of the chapter. Now the miracle that we're trying to present to you here is the creative and transformative work of God. Now it, it, with the, all these, all these uh, examples, it signifies the new covenant of water. Water which is like men's effort to wash away sin. And yet communion, God presents it when Jesus did in Holy Communion. Wine is communion. In is where, whereby it's God's new covenant that His blood permanently washes us forever from our sins.
Now we go to the discussion time. Number one, why was Mary expecting Jesus would perform a miracle despite his initial response? Number two, any spiritual significance in the six stone jars of water used for ceremonial cleansing which Jesus turned into wine? Number three, why did Jesus perform this as the first miracle? I trust you have a good time discussing this with your CG and once again that the revelation of Jesus' miracles is that God is present living in your life every single day. Amen.